Every weekend, ABC 10's Walt Gray catches up with a Cal Matters journalist about the biggest political stories of the week. Walt? Welcome to our weekly discussion of all things current in California politics. I'm Walt Gray. Joining us this week, reporter Emily Hoven, a political expert for CalMatters.org. Emily, good to have you back here. Uh, one of our hot topics here is the personal exemption uh, belief. And how is the governor handling this? Yeah, so we had um, a very controversial bill introduced in the state legislature that basically would um, remove the personal belief exemption from the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for, for students. Um, and this bill, which was introduced by um, Sacramento Sen Senator uh, Richard Pan, um, would also go into effect for all K-12 students on January 1st, 2023. So very soon, that's a lot sooner than the governor's mandate. And by removing that exemption, you know, it's going to apply to a lot more people. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the governor handles this because he's been asked before about his vaccine mandate um, and different mandates at different schools. For example, um, in Los Angeles and Sacramento, they actually have pushed back their mandates because thousands of kids were not vaccinated. And the governor has sort of said, yeah, well, you know, mine allows families to make choices. So he might be confronted with this thing where are you going to basically sign this bill into law and potentially see thousands of kids you know, pushed into distance learning or uh, back the plan that you originally put forward that would allow those those exemptions. Another thing on the governor's plate is, uh, is California in a pandemic or an endemic? And, and where do we stand with this? The governor recently said that the state is in the middle of preparing this sort of endemic strategy, which would suggest that, you know, California is kind of coming out of this tunnel. We can start to treat COVID the way we treat other viruses. Um, at the same time, he and lawmakers have uh, put forward this deal that would basically um, reignite this emergency paid sick leave program for COVID-19. Um, he also wants legislature to appropriate up to around $2 billion in emergency money for the pandemic response. And so for me, that raises the question of, okay, if we are approaching a more normal endemic strategy, a lot of these responses seem to have like the word emergency attached to it. What are the metrics that are, you know, pushing you to ask for that much money tied to emergency funding? Another uh, hot state issue is, is jobs right now. A million workers seemingly have disappeared Yet if the public assistance thing is over with in terms of unemployment or where are we with that and there are so many jobs open, where's the disconnect here? The state continues to have the highest unemployment rate. Um, even though things are improving, the number of people unemployed is going down. But that's also because a million people have seemingly just disappeared out of the workforce and they're no longer in the job market at all anymore. And it's very difficult to understand, you know, what they're doing, where they are, how they're able to make ends meet if they are not, you know, getting unemployment checks or some of the pandemic benefits that were here earlier in the pandemic. Um, and we're seeing lawmakers respond. Newsom has, you know, introduced more than 20 different workforce development programs. Um, and so it, it seems like the state is sort of still figuring out its strategy to get people back into, into the workforce, but it's clear that the economy is going to continue to lag. Our unemployment rate is going to stay, you know, the highest in the nation if those people are not sort of brought back into the fold. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a giant black hole here. Nobody can seem to figure it out. Emily, thank you. Always nice to visit with you. Cal Matters is a nonpartisan news organization explaining California policies and politics. Find their work at calmatters.org. You can also sign up for Emily's newsletter there.